Hello and welcome to Overdrive. I'm Onirjeet and I'm back with more facts and insights on automobiles. We have been talking about the different technical aspects in vehicles and have been covering the bases. Today, we are here covering another type of powertrains, that's hybrids. In hybrids, an ICE engine and an electric motor cumulatively drive the vehicle, forming a strong middle ground between ICE and fully electric vehicles to provide a cleaner and more efficient performance than a regular ICE. In the hybrid space, the ICE engine and the electric motor are aligned in different formats to produce varied results, making essentially three different types of hybrids. Let's check them out. First is the full hybrid, which is also called an FHEV. In a full hybrid, the vehicle moves from the power of either the ICE engine or the electric motor, or a combination of both. Further, they are differentiated as parallel and series hybrids. In parallel hybrids, both the ICE engine and the electric motor are connected to the transmission moving the vehicle. A varied power distribution among the two helps in creating an optimum efficiency from the both. The batteries are powered by the motor which acts as a generator and hence a separate generator is not needed. A parallel hybrid can never function solely on the electric motor and it only helps in providing a boost to the engine. The Toyota Camry, Honda Accord are popular examples of parallel hybrids. Also known as range extender hybrids, these have their composition a bit different. The ICE engine doesn't drive the wheels and it's not even connected to it. The engine instead powers a generator which powers the electric motor and finally the wheels turn. The electrical component consisting of the battery and the electric motor are both charged and run by the generator respectively. Hence, when more power is required, the motor derives power from both the battery and the generator. Popular examples of series hybrids are the Chevrolet Volt, BMW i3, Ford Fusion and others. As the name suggests, it comes as a combination of both where the ICE engine and the electric motor both are connected to the transmission propelling the wheels. But the twist comes with a power splitter which distributes power to further produce optimum efficiency. These vehicles can function on either of the units working together or solo. At lower speeds, this works as a series HEV, while at higher speeds, the ICE takes over to give better efficiency. Toyota generally uses a series parallel system with the famous Prius and the latest Innova Hi-Cross featuring a strong hybrid of the same type. In a mild hybrid system, the electrical component doesn't propel the vehicle alone. Instead, it helps providing a boost to the ICE engine resulting in a good low-end torque output and also supports the air conditioning saving on fuel. Mild hybrids do not need to be plugged in and the batteries are charged through a combination of power from the ICE engine and also the energy recovered from the brakes, which is popularly called regenerative braking. The Toyota Urban Cruiser High Rider, Maruti Suzuki Grand Vitara are all mild hybrid vehicles. These are essentially a halfway point between a fully hybrid and a fully electric vehicle. The main difference between a plug-in hybrid and the others is the ability to recharge its battery externally as well as internally, hence the name. These vehicles come with a much larger battery pack and hence provide absolute autonomy to either drivetrains. So you have a large enough battery pack backing your short commutes and yet on the longer trips you have the safety net of the ICE to cancel out range anxiety. Truly the best of both worlds. Land Rover, Range Rover and the Defender have plug-in hybrid variants. So this sums up the last leg of the engine segment and I'll be back again with more facts and insights next week. Hit the like button and subscribe to the YouTube page of Overdrive and follow us on Instagram. I'll see you next week. Mm.